thank you so much. And everybody, now let's bring in Ukrainian Parliament member Alexei Goncharenko. Thank you so much. Uh, Alexei, you know, it's so great to see you. Um, you and I spoke, so I remember, literally uh, days after the war was launched. Here it is a year later. Um, it, it's astounding, uh, the courage of the Ukrainian people. Um, how do you feel this year has fared, and where do you think you're at right now? Yeah, like I was told by one American senator, uh, you can purchase weaponry, you can purchase ammunition. The only thing you can't purchase is the courage uh, for resilience, and Ukrainian people showed during this year to the whole world that they are ready to fight for their country, that they are ready to sacrifice their lives, that this is not just a war for Ukraine, independence for Ukraine, but that is also very important. But also this is the war for our global and common values. Uh, just uh, stopping the dictatorships, showing that it's not the way how the uh, everything the, the world politics should go by forceful change of the borders and by such brutal attacks and awful atrocities, which you already mentioned. Today, um, in Munich Security Conference, there was a speech of Vice President Kamala Harris, uh, and she said that as a former prosecutor, she can say definitely that Russia committed atrocities and crimes against humanity in Ukraine, and they should be responsible for this. And what you told about Ukrainian children, it's one of the most hopeful, the worst uh, crimes, and that is the part of what is called genocide. That's what Russia is doing. Yeah, it's amazing to hear about those children in the 43 camps that our Shelby Wilder was just talking about. Um, you know, there were reports also that Russia has been deploying 93 uh, percent of its army in Ukraine, 97 um, percent, rather, I'm sorry, but it's obviously still struggling to advance. I mean, that's close to 100 uh, percent. Do you think that Ukraine has a chance to take it down, and are you astounded at how much of the Russian forces have come? in there, and yet here you are uh, a year later. You know, if Russia even will use 197 percent of uh, what they have, uh, Ukraine will stand, because uh, our moral is uh, uncomparable to Russia. We know what we are fighting for. We're not fighting for Tsar, for president, for some tyrant. We're fighting just for our homes, for our land, for our families. We know that if Russia will take Ukraine, they will just kill all of us uh, and take our children to make from them Russians. That's why we don't have any other option than to fight, and that's why I'm absolutely sure we will win. The only question is when, and it depends from the weaponry supply. We can win this war quickly if we would receive long-range missiles, fighter jets, other stuff very quickly. Uh, and I want to tell you, I um, just met with the. Uh, uh, Mitch McConnell, uh, Leader McConnell, uh, Leader of Republicans in the Senate, with uh, Chairman McCall, Head of Foreign Affairs Committee in the House of Representatives. Uh, and they are so strong in their position in support of Ukraine, saying that, uh, like, you know, one of the thesis was that our fathers stopped uh, Nazism uh, 80 years ago. It's our duty to stop Nazism today. And um, I think with such support, and they're saying that they want to see that the current the administration should do more and quicker in support of our country uh, and giving more weaponry, the most important, to give us a possibility to finish this work quite quickly. Because, yes, the good news after one year is that the uh, Russian plan failed. They did not take Kiev or Odessa or Kharkiv. But the bad news, that is, the war still continues. We want it to finish as quickly as possible. We need, we need just one thing, weaponry. Where do you see this going also, Alexei? Do you ever see that there might be peace talks or some sort of discussion with Putin and Zelensky? Do you ever see that happening? You know, uh, the problem is uh, not negotiations themselves. Uh, the problem is what will be the subject of negotiations. So if to speak about Russia retreating from Ukraine, we are ready for this today. We are ready for this any moment. If Putin wants to have negotiations about Ukraine giving up its territories, we will never go for such negotiations. It's important not just only for us, it's important for the whole world. Because even if one inch of Ukrainian territory will be taken by Russia, it will mean that international law doesn't work. 
that you can take, bigger country can attack smaller one, take a part of a territory, and that's all. That, can, that will be the worst possible message to the world, especially after Ukraine 30 years ago, voluntarily, for the first time in human history, gave up nuclear weaponry. Under the guarantees of the United States, United Kingdom, and funny Russia, we understand what, what we can do with their guarantees. Sorry, just to go to the toilet with them. But uh, it would be the worst possible scenario and message to the world if they can change borders like this. We're losing you a little bit there, Alexei, but we are so honored to have you here uh, all the way from Thank Ukraine. You. And uh, it's Thank really you. great to see you here. I uh, hear it is a year later, and uh, the world has just been in awe of the courage of the Ukrainian people. It's great to have you here, Alexei. Thank you very much. Thank you.